Shane. That was wonderful. Well, good morning. Welcome to Grace Baptist Temple on the beautiful Sunday morning here in October. We're going to go ahead and open up with our uh, morning or our opener for this month, which is You Are Worthy. So those of you who are at home, you'll have it on the screen. I'm not going to ask you to stand at home, but it would give you the opportunity to get into the spirit of things. So, but those of us who are here, if you want to go ahead and stand, we'll go ahead and sing our opener this morning. We'll sing the first two verses. You, brother Lance, you may be seated if you're here in the sanctuary for those few that are here, but taking care of all the technical things and the instruments and that. Uh, it's it's a, a, a virtual Sunday morning. I, I know you've realized that by now. Uh, out of an abundance of, of caution, really, of what's going on in San Antonio and in our nation around the world, uh, we're going to take the next couple of weeks uh, through next Sunday and then have our services live streamed so that we can, you know, just be a little extra careful, make sure we protect our congregation from any, any kind of outbreak in that. So uh, bear with us as we do that. Um, still got to get up, still got to put those ties on, still got to make sure you get those, those dresses on, get ready for church and, and, and be in your place because uh, the Lord knows he can see you where you are in that. Some announcements that we have for this week, we are celebrating Pastor and Debbie's 28th anniversary here at Grace Baptist Temple. Woohoo! That's exciting, isn't it? Wouldn't you like to be 28? It's been like, what, 70 years, Lance? Something like that? No. 71. 71, something like that. Uh, but uh, what a blessing it is to have uh, Pastor and Debbie leading this congregation for so many years. Trust trust, uh, trust uh, that you've already communicated that to them. Uh, this will be one that they'll remember for a long time. Uh, Pastor obviously would want to be here in our services this morning. Uh, with us live and, and presenting the message and that. Uh, unfortunately, that's not, that's not possible this morning. Um, he and Debbie both have been tested for and are positive for COVID. And so be praying for them. Be praying for others in our church that have been tested. Be praying for uh, those around the world, around our city, that are positive and, and that the Lord would just allow them to make it through this time of infection uh, with minimal Minimal uh, risk, or not risk, but the minimal side effects of the of the virus. And do pray for Brother Charles. He uh, is going to be released from, released from the ICU. And uh, they're just waiting for a room to open up for him so he can be moved over. So that's a real blessing. The families appreciate your prayer there. Pray for uh, Billy and Pat Williams, a pastor over in Florida, small church there in Florida. Uh, friends of Dan and Cherry's, 
Uh, last night, uh, their daughter, 48 years old, who's been suffering uh, with cancer for some time, uh, went home to be with the Lord. And so if you'd pray for uh, Pastor Billy uh, and Miss Pat Williams and their family, their congregation there. Also pray for Brother Philip, was running a low-grade low fever. He has been tested, don't have results back yet to see if he has caught uh, the virus. Uh, pray for Brother Doug as he still continues to recover from his shoulder surgery and also uh, Miss Phoebe and, and, uh, and her broken femur and her recovery there and therapy. So many things in our nation right now that we need to pray about. Uh, some things to make you aware of. Uh, again, we talked about us having our services uh, virtual for the next couple of weeks. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to have our traditional anniversary service in the afternoon. We're not going to be here live on property, but Pastor is going to conduct that service virtually, so it'll be live streamed. So sign in at 3 o'clock, sign in a little bit early. Good Baptists are always early, right? Amen. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sign in a little, a little early if you can. Make sure everything's working uh, as far as technology, and join us at 3 o'clock uh, for, an, uh, for an encouraging a uh, message from Pastor on this anniversary uh, weekend. Also, uh, we're going to have uh, the uh, early voting start this Tuesday, so get out and do your civic duty. It's important for all uh, Americans, registered Americans, to, to uh, vote, uh, cast your, your, your voice, uh, you vote, vote, your, vote your conscience, vote uh, what the Lord would have you to vote, uh, and, and, and pray. Pray for our country in this time. Uh, pray for healing, and not only from this virus, but from some of the ills that are going on in our nation right now, that we might uh, return to a, a better place um, in, in our worship of God, in our trust of Him, and, and in our, our uh, faithfulness as, as a nation to, to meet and exceed any challenge. And so uh, pray for these things, and um, continue to pray for our pastor. And that, Brother Lance, I'm going to invite you back to, to, to uh, lead us in some, some more music, please. All right. Now, for those of us in the auditorium, if you'll go ahead and turn over to hymn number 575, A Child of the King. For those of you at home, let's go ahead and just view your screen. You'll see the words up on the monitor, PC, TV, whatever you're using, tablet, phone, um, scribe, I don't know what it is. Oh, Leaning on the everlasting arms. My mistake. All right. This is 575. <laughs> standing, and you are, I see. Let's go ahead and turn over in our hymnals to hymn number, um, okay, 
I'm reading this wrong. Six, six nine zero, right? I have to have just another set of eyes. Uh, yes. Okay, six nine zero. <laughs> it's terrible when you get old. Thank you, Brother Lance. Now we are blessed that we have a God that leads us. And, you know, as we think about those who have gone on before us, it's a, it's a sobering thought to come to that point when God brings you home. And the, and the, the victory for the Christian is apparent. It's hardest on those left behind. Uh, and, and we've seen that a bit in our church over the last, really, several months and several years. I was reflecting on that earlier this week and, and uh, worked this morning with Shane a little bit on a song that I remember was sung many, many years ago about that specific. And I thought, well, maybe it'd be an encouragement this morning. So, Brother Shane, if you will. They say that heaven's pretty and living here is true but if they said that i would have to choose between the two i'd go home going home where i belong Sometimes when I'm dreaming, it comes as no surprise. And if you look, you'll see that homesick feeling in my eyes. And 
going home. I'm headed home where I belong. But while I'm here, I'll serve him gladly, sing him all these songs. I'm here. It's such a joy to know that I am only passing through. I'm headed home. I'm going home where I belong. And one day I'll be sleeping when death knocks on my door. I'll wake to find that I'm not homesick anymore. Cause I'll be home. Yes, I'll be home. And that's a promise for every believer that we're going to be home with the Lord one of these days. I'm uh, going to, going to uh, stand, if you will, here, here in the sanctuary. We're going to read uh, God's Holy Scripture. If you're joining us this morning by live stream or other, I'd ask you to join with us as we read Scripture this morning. Uh, let me see if I can get into my Bible here. And we're going to be in Revelation, the book of Revelation, last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 2. I know that this is not the, the message that Pastor uh, had planned to present this morning, to preach this morning, that he had studied for and, uh, and would be more well equipped to present than, than anything I could present. But it's what the Lord laid on my heart when Pastor texted me on Friday night. And uh, my first two words, as I used to, as I was reminded by my wife, I used to uh, come home uh, from work, and, and oftentimes when, when I walked into the house and things were not exactly as I expected them to be, I would exclaim this. And, uh, and, and she always asks me before I have to teach or, or, or give a message, she says, well, what are you, you going to teach on? What are you going to preach on? And I said, well, it's, my, it's between me and the Lord, and you'll find out tomorrow. And she said, well, no, I, I, want, I want some insight. I want, I want to know what you're doing. Why do wives want to know that? Probably because she knew that I used her a lot of time as illustration in my lessons, and she wanted to know if she needed to prepare for it, but that's just the way it is. But uh, the, the, the title for it really came as I was studying Scripture, and, and a pastor had texted me and asked me if I would take this, this um, opportunity um, to stand behind this sacred desk and present this material uh, it reminded me of two words that I used to say all the time when I'd come home and find things that weren't quite like they necessarily normally were. And those two words were, what happened? That's what we're going to study about this morning. What happened? And we're going to look specifically here in, in uh, Revelation chapter 2 at the first church that's mentioned here in chapter 2 and an example and a, a, a period of time that God is is revealing to us, uh, giving specifically to the Apostle John as he's writing these things and transcribing them and, and, and preparing them for us. Uh, and, and we're going to read through these. The key verse that we're going to capitalize on this morning is verse number four. But I want to read the first seven verses of Revelation chapter two. And the scripture says, And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Now, I want to draw your attention really, just really quickly here. We're going to continue to read in a second. But, but uh, in, in my Bible, these letters are all in red. Why is that? Because these are the words, these are Jesus' words, okay? He's the one speaking these words to John. 
giving him this instruction. goes on to say here in verse number 3, and says, And hast borne and hast patience for my name's sake, and hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, our key verse says, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear that the, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You may be seated, and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for uh, this Sunday morning. I do pray, Father, that you would help our pastor, Miss Debbie, and all of those, Father, uh, who are feeling a little under the weather, all those who have contracted or under testing for this virus. I pray, God, that you would just miraculously uh, help them to battle and, and come out of the other side of this uh, quickly. Father, uh, renew their strength, renew their vigor, keep them uh, uh, safe from side effects and all types of uh, illness within this time. I pray, Father, for uh, all those who have been mentioned this, more early, this morning earlier that you would just bless. But, Father, I pray the most that you would pray, that you would, Father, help us as we pray. Help us to understand what it is that you have us, uh, would have us to learn and to glean from your precious word this morning. Help us, Lord, to find that nugget of truth or nuggets of truth that we can carry forth with us in our daily walk for you and our walk with you that would help us, Lord, to stay clearly on your path. Help us to avoid um, the traps and, and, um, and uh, hurdles that would, that would uh, rob us of the joy of the rewards so that you'll present to those who have been faithful to you. We ask you for all these things. We thank you for those who were able to sign in this morning. And we ask for clarity in the rest of this message. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Okay, you're already seated. So, And you're probably seated at home, too, as I think about this. Uh, folks, now I know, I, I know that here in Revelation chapter 2, uh, you know, John is being presented uh, several churches here and several periods of time in the church that, uh, that are going to be chronicled. And, and, that, and, and as I was reading through this this last week and studying for this lesson, I, I, there have been many spins on this. There's been many, many uh, different teachings on these churches and, and, and that. And I'm not, I, I'm not a deep thinker, okay? I, I was told a long time ago, you know, keep, if you're going to teach somebody something, put it on the bottom shelf because everybody can reach the bottom shelf. You know, if you, if you want to teach it up here, then, then you're, you're going to miss 90% of the masses. And, and, and that works that way for me. I, I'm not a deep thinker. I'm not a, I'm not a spiritual giant. You know that if you know me. All right, but but as I was reading through this scripture and comparing scripture to scripture, and then I, I thought, you know, yeah, John is being he's being revealed through revelation uh, these truths, these tenets by the Lord about this early church, this apostolic uh, era church, and 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 things that they did, and and what they were like, and what they did in their daily routines, and what they did in their daily lives, and he was being encouraged in that, uh, and and we see that that the Lord gives him. Uh, commendations. He gives seven specific uh, commendations to this church. And then he pulls back and he gives one condemnation to this church. Seven really good things. One really bad thing. And then he goes on uh, to compel them to think back in their history. Go back a little ways to when it was like it was before. And then he closes out the teaching to this church, about this church, giving them encouragement to listen, hear. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Because, you, know, you know, this is not just, this is not just happening or didn't just happen to this church here at, at Ephesus. And if you don't know anything about Ephesus, I'll tell you what, Ephesus was a, it was a very important city. I mean, it was a mega city, and, and, and Paul spent a lot of time uh, teaching, writing, and preaching, and, 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 and encouraging these Christians. Look at the, book, the, the, the letters to the Ephesians, and you'll, you'll see that. But, but this city was, was a, a conglomeration of everything. Everything wicked that you can think of had the largest temple to, to a god outside of, 
outside of the one true and living God to Diana. What a what a just a, a debauchery that was. Uh, the goddess of fertility uh, that, that was was known in that that time. An amphitheater that would seat over a hundred thousand people. Great stadiums today seat about that. Can you imagine in that time, two thousand years ago, gathering that many people in one place? They were probably didn't have to social distance. I, I, I don't know. Just I'm just thinking, you know, that they probably didn't. But but uh, you, you, you looked at what they had to deal with, the young church there at Ephesus. And, and you think of uh, the, the time that Brother Paul actually developed and devoted to them to strengthen them, to, to encourage them in their faith. And, and now to have the Lord here in John's life, uh, well, he's there on the Isle of Patmos, and uh, in about AD 96, and he gives him this final revelation. Um, and, and, and I think it's interesting to look at, just look at verse number one, Revelation uh, chapter one, verse one. I love the way Revelation opens up because, you know, there are specific blessings to Christians who will study Revelation. It's in the book. It, it is. And look at verse one, it says that revelate the revelation of who? Of Jesus Christ, which who? God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Okay. Now you say, well, that was 1900 years ago, brother William. Well, you know, time is a little bit different, the connotation of time to God than it is to finite man. All right. We don't understand time like God understands time. It's a little bit of time. It's surely going to come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Uh, folks, John is writing now. He's been compelled to write what's here in, these, in, in this great book of the Bible. And uh, I want to start with looking at the, condom, or the, the commendation. The commendation. Uh, I, when I was a young NCO many, many years ago in the Air Force, I, I was privileged to receive a medal called a, what, what, Brother Lance? A commendation medal. You probably have a, a chest full of those, I'm sure, from his, his distinguished service. I'll, I'll, I'll bet you've got a commendation medal, too, don't you? Yeah, look, lots of folks in here that have been in the military, the commendation medal. You know, they highlight a period of time. A period of time where you did some really, really good things. And it's a, it's a distinguished service that they give you. They pin a medal on your chest, da 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 Oh, wow. It's, it's just exciting. Jesus gives a commendation for this church here, and he, and he starts it in verse number 2. And, 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 and he highlights seven things. The first thing that he highlights is, I know thy works. Ooh, works. Ooh, sometimes Baptists get a little crazy about works, don't they? Don't they? They, 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 they think, well, it's not a works-based salvation. And it's not a works-based salvation. We don't work for our salvation. We can't work our way to heaven. There is no way possible to do that. There's some pretty good people out there, but if they're resting on what they do, they're lost. And, and, and that's a shame. We work because of our salvation. When we get saved, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, Something inside us, I would say the Holy Spirit of God, who indwells the believer at the point of salvation, compels us and encourages us to love him enough to want to do things for him. I want to serve my Lord. I want to serve the Savior. I didn't want to before I got saved. It didn't, didn't, wasn't something that occurred to me. It happened after I got saved. But to the sinner, that confuses them. They think, well, you got to work. you got to do this. you got to get a pie. you got to do it. No. I want to do those things. I enjoy doing those things. I'm excited when I get to do those things. That's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. It's not a must-do. It's a want-to. And, that, and that's what we see here. He commends them for their works. They are a doer bunch of people. They are. And, 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 and then he goes on to say, and secondly, for thy labor. Hmm. Now, that, la that word labor can, can also be trans trans uh, translated in as their weariness. They're worked to the point of being weary, all right? They've labored so much. I don't know about you, but, but I get tired sometimes when I get out on the work. I was, I was painting the other day, and by the end of the day, you know, when you're looking under the eaves of houses and you're trying to reach up in those places, and I get dizzy at this time, you know, when, at my age, when I tilt my head back too far, I get a little wonky. And that didn't happen to me when I was in my 20s and 30s. It's just the way it happens to me today. 
But uh, at the end of the day, I'm whipped. I'm weary. But I still like to work. I still don't, I still don't uh, dread working, even though I'm weary. I'm laboring. I'm laboring in things that I love to do. He goes on thirdly to say, and thy patience. Woo! Now that's a virtue, isn't it? The Bible says patience is a virtue, one of the virtues listed. It's probably one of the hardest ones to, to, to adapt to, to take in a life. Some people are really good at it. I am not. It's one that, uh, on, my, on, my, on my priority scale of things most important to me to do right now, patience is at the bottom. Okay? I like to get her done. I like to get her done like right now. And, and that gets me in trouble sometimes. It's challenging to me sometimes. But these folks were a patient church. They were a church that worked, that labored to weariness, to that were patient. They also uh, were careful about the people that they came into contact with and the people in the church sometimes that maybe caused some problems. This, he commends them for, for, for this next. He says, and how, canst thou not, and, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. They kept an eye out for those wolves that were clothed in sheep's clothing. They wanted to protect the assembly. They wanted to protect the church from those people who would come in and try to devour the saints or, or, or taint the work. They wouldn't support them. I like that word to bear, to bear up, to hold up, to lift up, to, to, to support, okay? Uh, those kind of people, you need to drop them. Drop, don't bear them up. Don't, don't prop them up. Let them go. Let them go. Let them drop because they're, they're not going to be anything but a hindrance. And that's what these folks were doing. goes on to say, fifthly, thou hast tried them that say they are apostles and are, what's the scripture say? And are not. And hast found them liars. Hmm. Now, how do you usually find out if somebody's not telling the truth? The hard way. A lot of times somebody said here in the sanctuary, the hard way. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the um, measuring stick is really go to the truth. Go to the truth of the Word of God. What does God's holy Word say about it? If they're in error against that or in opposition to what God's Word says, guess what? They're liars. God has given us, He has preserved for us His precious truth, the holy Word of God. And if we don't follow it, if we get so wrapped around the axle with these people that would tell us, oh, but, yeah, I, I know that's what it says, but, we'll get the but out of it, all right? We don't need it in there, because there's no but with God. There's not. It's a matter of, do you believe it by faith? Are you living it by faith? Uh, it, it's truth, and His Word is true and preserved for us. We have a great privilege there. And they did that. They tried them. They, they evaluated them. They made sure they knew about them. And he goes on to say, the, the uh, sixth commendation here, you have borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored. He again touts them in there. They, 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 they've done all of these things. They took up the cross of Christ daily, and they carried it with them. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. I'm encouraged when I, when I read scripture like Galatians 6, 9. You know, when you look at Galatians 6, 9, it, 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 it tells us, you know, that, that we're, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to carry on to a certain point, right? Well, what's it say? It says uh, in Galatians 6, 9, and, uh, and, and has let us, and let us not be weary in well-doing. All right? Are those works? Well-doing? You're doing well, right? Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Keep at it, folks. You know, now's a time of discouragement, I think, in our land. I think now is a time of discouragement across our nation, across our planet. People are discouraged. People are taking their lives. People are, are losing their jobs. People are, are, are outside of their mind trying to figure out, what do I do next? They don't need to be. There is still one true and living God in charge of all who has the capability, if he wanted to, to wipe out all virus. One of these days, he will. 
One of these days, we don't have to worry about Corona, SARS, swine flu, bird flu, snake flu, frog flu, whatever kind of flu they want to come up with next. I'm surprised that the people that used to lick those frogs out in California didn't get some type of virus from that. You know, do you remember that some 20 years ago when they were licking frogs out in the, in the forest of California to get a high? What a crazy time that was. But folks, we're living in crazy times. Wouldn't it be great if, uh, if we just trust the Lord? If we just, like this church, okay, we're examples now here, right, in, in, in these verses. They're examples. They're doing it all right. They're, they're, they're doing it all right, and, and it would be great if it could stay that way. I mean, it would be one of those kind of Fourth of July movements, you know, when you're watching the fireworks, if, if, we, were, if we were operating like this church across the world. You get to the end of the fireworks, and you know the, the, that the, uh, the final, the finale is going to hit, right? And what do they do? They throw up the biggest and the best, don't they? And what does, the, what does the audience that's sitting there looking at that, and that's what we should be doing at this church right now, looking at that saying, wow. That's what you do. You go, wow. Ooh. Ah. This is an amazing church. <laughs> but then we get to the next verse, don't we? We keep reading. We just keep reading. One more verse. Verse 4, our key verse. And it starts with, nevertheless. Uh-oh. Well, you know, I had all of this going here for you, but i got to bring something else up. i, I got to tell you something else that's true about your church. Okay? And the Lord says here, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Can you imagine him pointing his finger at the church of Ephesus saying, I got something against thee, you. I don't know about you, but I can imagine the hair raising up on the back of their neck. I don't know about you, but I've been called on the carpet a time or two in my life in the military where a superior officer or non-commissioned officer had poor Airman Dambacker or Sergeant Dambacker or even Chief Dambacker, uh, in their office, and you had to do the old salute. You know, you were standing at attention in front of the desk, in front of that, that superior officer, and you knew something was about to happen. You might not have even known what it was for. But you know, when planes crash, or people lose their lives, I remember when I was in basic training as a superintendent my last year, we had a young man who, who, who died in training in one of the dormitories. Uh, on guard duty, and uh, it was one of those times when you're called into the office by the wing commander, and they bring in the, the group commander, they bring in the chief, they bring in everybody, and you're trying to figure out what happened here, and you're thinking, oh my word, how could this, this young man was going to graduate in four days, he was going off to tech school, he, he was going to, he had a, a brilliant career ahead of him, he had graduated college and came in and enlisted, was going to was, was going to serve, and then going to the officer corps it was his desire, and, and all of these things. And in one tragic moment, because of one dumb act, he took his life. And I remember standing there and how uncomfortable that was. I can imagine these people in this church, as the Lord says to them, I have somewhat against thee. That's not a time where you want a lot of time to lapse before you figure out what it is. You kind of want to know so you can plan ahead, right? Beautifully in the Bible, the Lord doesn't make us wait. Look what he does. He, he, he tells us very quickly there in verse number four, because it's coming, here it comes, thou hast left thy first love. Hmm. What was their first love? It wasn't some puppy love. It wasn't some sensual love. It wasn't some phileo love, some friendship that they had. It was the purest form of love. That's what this love is. It was agape love. The kind of love that God loves. They had lost their purest love. Excuse me, I, I said that wrong. They had left their purest love for the holy God. I don't care all the good commendation that they had before. They walked away. They chose to make a turn in their life 
and walk away from the God who had saved them, from the God who was sustaining them, from the God who had all power to do everything good in their life, they chose to leave. Now, this happens today. You know, we're, we're, we're looking at a church that existed, you know, in the time of Christ and with, within, a, within a generation of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, the Apostle John was still alive. Okay, and he walked with Christ, was one of the inner quorum, the closest friends, confidants. And Jesus is giving him this, and, 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 he's, and he's pinning it to us and, and for us. So it's not just to that church. This is a, this is a, a, a good primer for all of us to understand. We, we can all fall into the same trap by churches and by people, by individuals. When we, we can have everything going on, everything good in our lives, and, and then all of a sudden something happens and we leave. We left our first love. You know, Paul encourages us to, to, to run the course, to run the race to the end of the course, doesn't he? How many, how many Olympians do you see that stop on the course and just say, ah, you know, I'm not going to win, so I'm going to just kick off here at the 200-meter mark uh, rather than go the full, full distance of 400 meters? I'm, I'm sure not going to win. They run, through the, they run through the tape, don't they? They do. How many Christians... Start, I mean, they're off the blocks, bang! And they're off the blocks, and they're running and going, I mean, as fast as they can. And then they see other Christians maybe getting ahead of them, other people around the world getting ahead of them, and they're like, uh, <laughs> and then they walk, off the, they walk off the course. They get mad, they get heated, and they walk off the course. Instead of just saying, you know what? I'm going to run. I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm finish as quickly as I can. They had walked away. They had walked away from the greatest and only Savior that could secure their eternity, that could keep them sustained. You know, we, we have folks, in, in my years of salvation, I was saved in 1982, a little church outside of Hill Air Force Base. Because one of my good friends who worked in a weapons another weapons team in my weapons shop there at Hill, got saved and then started pestering me to death, Bruce Slager. And Bruce was, he was relentless. William, you need to come church with me. Bruce, I'm, I'm doing okay, brother. No, you need, it's not about being okay. It's you got you to come, you got to hear what these people are teaching. You need to know the Lord, your personal Savior. Yeah, Bruce, I'm all right, buddy. Just leave me alone. I'm not, I'm not drinking. I'm not going out doing all kinds of crazy things. I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. I was 19. And finally, I had had it up to here with Bruce. And I told him one day in the, in the weapons shop, I said, Bruce, I'll tell you what, Sunday morning, buddy, I'm coming to church with you. And then I will have fulfilled my responsibility to you, and I don't want you to ever pester me again about going to church. Never bother me again about it. Deal. Be looking for you on Sunday morning. Sure enough, I went on Sunday morning, and I went farther than just went on Sunday morning. I went down the aisle Sunday morning at the end of service and, and accepted Christ as my Savior. And his twin brother did the same thing in the same service. We both were baptized that night. I'm glad Bruce pestered me. I'm so glad that Bruce Lager bothered me enough and bothered enough to tell me, even when I was not kind to him, that I needed something. And there was a joy that I had never known in, in, in my heart. There was a joy that compelled me to, to keep going back and to learn. And, and now all these years later, I still look back to that. You know, and folks, I, I, I thank God that there, there are people like that who are living testimonies, who, who won't give up. Uh, you know, sometimes, oftentimes, churches uh, and, and churches that we've been in in the past, you know, it, it, it sometimes becomes like a country club. Where people are just there because of the the fellowship and the socialism, the, so, the social. Sorry, that's not the word I wanted to use. The socialization that they have, okay? The socialization. You know, I mean, they'll never miss a feed, but they'll also never miss. They, they won't. They won't participate in the Wednesday night service. I don't care if it's live streamed or live. What a shame. That's what this church did. They left. They walked away. They didn't love God enough to stick with it to the end. 
beautiful part about it is that the Lord goes on and he, he, he compels them um, with the answer to how to get back on the right track. He doesn't leave them in this condition. He, he goes on the extra step, the Lord does, and says, here's how, here's how you can get right with me. And, and I love that. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, remember... Therefore, from whence thou art fallen. He doesn't stop there. It reminded me as I was reading this. I don't know about you, but I used to like those old schoolhouse rocks when I was a little kid. Remember those? Remember those? Oh, I mean, I mean, I, I learned the preamble to the Constitution through schoolhouse rock. I, I learned conjunctions. We're going to use some conjunctions here in a minute. The Lord uses conjunctions. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words. Razors and clauses. Remember that? I love that stuff. But we're going to do some conjunctions here. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, conjunction, and we're hooking up, aren't we? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. And repent. It's critical. Another conjunction comes right after that. And do. He's taking, you've got to take active steps. Active steps after you remember after you go back and start to rewind, it's like, oh, wow, well, that's what I did back then. Oh, that's how that worked back then. Oh, you mean I, I was teaching a Sunday school class back then? I was working in Awanas. I was working in Patch. I was I, I did all these. What happened to me? Why am I not doing any of that stuff now? Well, I'm old. Oh, so am I. So are a lot of people. I used to spend hours and hours and hours praying all the time. How come you're not anymore? I don't, I don't know. Because you left. You left off in some way the merit of loving God. But God compels us here. The Lord compels us to remember, to repent, and to get back to do the first works. What's that? Go back to verse 2 and 3. You'll see them. They're right there. Get back in there and start doing them again. Else I will come quick, like unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. That ought to scare any Christian. That ought to scare any church. Can you imagine the church? If we had to turn the lights off here at Grace Baptist Temple, shut the doors, and close this ministry, do you know how many people around the world, how many missionaries that would not be supported? How many people around San Antonio, how many families around this area would, 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 would not have a bright light shining from this place? How sad that would be, wouldn't it? Well, it takes people to make up a church, oh, by the way. And, and we're compelled to, to be a part of that, actively as a part of that. And, and folks, uh, the Lord's serious. He doesn't play with the church. He died for the church. He wants us to live uh, in, 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 in a holy way as great members of his church and compel others to become part of it. And then, folks, uh, lastly here, he, he compels us in, in verse number seven. I'm going to skip over verse number six uh, and drop down to verse number seven. Because I, I, it's important that we understand uh, where, where he's going here in verse number 7. You know, we're, we're compelled to remember, but, but he also wants us to hear. He wants us to listen in verse number 7. And, and he tells us here, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Folks, um, he that hath an ear, there is an importance in not only hearing the word, but listening to the word. Has your parents ever told you, I know it happened to me, well, it's going in one ear and right out the other one. It's like there's nothing between to slow it down. You know what I'm saying? It's just air. <laughs> what a sad thing that is to have air between your ears instead of something that stops contemplates, thinks about it, puts it together, looks at all of this, and it says, oh, I better do something. It just zoom right out the other side. Um, well, folks, that's a dangerous place to be, to 
to just have it come in and just zip right through and not take up residence at all. Uh, does it stand to reason, because the Lord put this here, does it stand to reason that the Spirit has to remind them of this because they've stopped listening? Because they're not hearing anymore? I would think so. They're so busy with the cares of this world or even with the church and what they're doing that they're not participating actively in the proclamation of the Word. How do you participate with it when you don't even hear it? It's hard to do, isn't it? Well, I can get busy doing other things. Reminds me, many years ago, uh, in, in another church, I was in a Sunday school class. I was telling somebody this the other day. I was in a Sunday school class, and, and, and my wife and I were young married, young married Sunday school class, and, and the, the, um, the class instructor, the teacher, was, was pouring out his heart, and he was teaching a great lesson. Well, we were so packed in this little church that you had to have our Sunday school class in the kitchen, okay, in the kitchen. And so we're all in there in the kitchen, and here's the brother up front. It's a Baptist church. Thank you, Brother Lance. You're right. This is the brother up front of the church, and, 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 and you know what? He was teaching, and in the middle of the service, behind him in the entrance door, a guy walks in with one of those great big, used to be one of those great big Whataburger coolers. It was that ugly orange color with the white cap on top, five-gallon water cooler. He comes in, and he opens the ice machine. And he's filling up this ice bucket, and he walks over to the sink, and he takes out a five-gallon, or one of those big buckets of Gatorade. He pours that in, and he's filling it up with water. And I could see our instructor, our teacher, look at him like, whoa, what are you doing? And, you know, if that were me, I would have ripped his lips off. In Christian love, of course. <laughs> but this brother, who was a few years older than I was, and just a dear saint, looked at him and said, brother, tell you what, you'll wait for five more minutes. I'll help you fill that up. I'll bring it to your class for you. You got a deal? Because I'm trying to teach the Word of God here. That's kind of an interruption. You know, he was doing something for a class, but he was completely oblivious of what was right. The Word of God was being taught, and he was interrupting the Word of God because he had to get up and do something else that was more important than the preaching of the Word of God. Whew. We stand before the Lord. Can we, are we going to be able to give that as rationale for why somebody might have got distracted? who the Lord was working on their heart, and all of a sudden they got distracted because of what was going on. Those kind of things happen when you leave your first love. He left his first love. They left their first love. I love the, the end of verse number 7 because it injects a promise of rewards ahead of those who are overcomers. It tells us that they are going to eat of the tree of life. Adam and Eve couldn't even do that in the garden. But one day... One day, and good thing they didn't because they'd, they'd live forever in their sinful state. God protected them from that. But, 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 but one day as believers, if we can, can, can stay on that track and that we, we know the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, one of these days, folks, we are going to be able to eat of the tree of life. And that's not the only thing that heaven has. Uh, look, at, look, at, uh, look at the end of I, I love the fact that John talks about being overcomers uh, overcometh, specifically this word overcometh, more than anybody else. Actually, he's the only one that mentions it in the Bible. In 1 John twice, and, and, and then here in Revelations 11 times. The last time uh, John translates it here and puts it into the book of Revelations is in Revelation 21, verse number 7. Revelations 21, verse number 7, talking about being uh, a person that overcometh. It says here that he that, the he that overcometh shall inherit, what are they going to inherit? All things, all things, not just the tree of life, all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. What a great promise. Oh, my goodness, folks. What a great promise it is indeed. I, I, as, as we close this morning, let me ask you, are there any compelling comparisons with this church and their position and what the Lord's doing with them and in our lives? Is there anything there that, that um, maybe we need to remember a little bit, repent a little bit, and hear a little bit, and listen a little bit that would help us? I had a great preacher many, many years ago that, that, that told me, 
If I, you know, Brother William, you know what? If you were ever closer to the Lord than you are right now, do you realize you're backslidden? That was a powerful rattling of my cage. Because it was so simple, but it was so profound. Why is it that we get really close to the Lord at some points in our life and then we pull back? It's not because God's moving away from us. It's because we're moving away from Him. And, and folks, we don't have to. Fortunately, it's not too late to take God's direction and to do a little bit of remembering, remembering, to mull things over a little bit, to see exactly where we are in our faith, and to see if maybe we've gone the way of other Christians in the church, and, and, and uh, especially this church that we've overviewed today, who started so well, had everything going for them, and then they left. They didn't lose. They didn't lose anything. This is not like losing the great pearl. It's not like losing a coin. You didn't intend to do that. These folks intended. They left. Don't leave the Lord. Don't leave the God that loves you. Love Him back with a God they love in our lives and in our testimonies. Let's pray. Father, not an easy message to bring this morning, Lord, because I'm convicted myself. I'm convicted, Lord, that uh, I'm not always in the place I should be in my faith. I'm many, many more years down the road now than I was when I was a new believer with that new vigor, that new fire in my belly, that new uh, kindling that, that you brought into my life. And I know better, Lord, but it's still hard. And I, like many of your, your children, I need you, I beg you, dear God, to help us to understand. Help us, Lord, to um, confess and forsake those sins that so easily do beset us. And help us to get back on the road. To remember, Lord, the things that you've brought into our lives and what you've done for us. Help us to have a true agape love for you in the time that you've given us here uh, to, 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 to serve you. I pray for all these things. I pray for blessings for the rest of this day. Bring us back at 3 o'clock, Lord, for more blessings of, of, of encouragement as we get to see Pastor and, and uh, see him live streaming and celebrating this 28th anniversary of our church. Uh, his service here with our church. Thank you for this time. We ask for all these things in Jesus' name. All right, have a great afternoon.